Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different again. Uh, hopefully more successfully than we our, my video yesterday. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yesterday I was working on Xmonad and it was a complete and utter failure. You should definitely watch that video if you want to see utter entertainment. I mean, literally for 20 minutes I sat there and was trying to figure out how to get SXHKD working again in an auto start file. And it was all because I forgot to, you know, start SXHKD. <laughs> it was horrible. So hopefully today's better. So today we're going, I'm going to be trying to create my own Firefox start page. Now, for a long time, I've just been using others. So, um, if, um, uh, let's, uh, go ahead and jump over into the, uh, the main page here. So you can see what I'm, what I have right now. This is just somebody's that I grabbed off from Reddit. It's cool. It's cool. It's a little buggy, uh, but it's cool. I want to do something like this, but <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, HTML or CSS with by any stretch of the imagination. So um, like with a lot of these videos, I will say this right up front. This is not a tutorial. Uh, if you are here for a, hey, this is how you do something uh, and it's for sure going to work, you should find someone else. Uh, to watch because that is not what this is. This is a uh, I don't know what I'm doing. You probably don't know what you're doing. Maybe we can learn how to do this together kind of video and I like doing those because um, I am not a an expert on anything and I like to learn things so um, the first task uh, we're going to do is I want to show you what um, what uh, I want to do what what I want it to look like. Let's see here if I can find it. Uh, give me a second here. Let's move this over to this here, and we can close this. So I just something simple. I'm not looking for anything extravagant like what I you know what I have right now. Just something that has uh, you know a few categories, some links, and a search box to duck duck to go. Uh, whether or not I'll be able to do the search box, probably not in this video. Um, that's going to take some learning how to do, I, I'm assuming, JavaScript or something. I'm actually completely, I may end up having to pull somebody else's out and just paste it into mine. <laughs> uh, that That's maybe possible. But um, anyways, this is what uh, kind of what I want to do. This, it should be fairly easy. Set the background, set some H1, you know, uh, H1 tags and then style them with some CSS and some fonts, uh, and then some links. That's literally all it is. The hardest part is going to be get, getting them, to, oops, is going to be get, getting the, uh, the, the links and stuff to line up horizontally. I'm not sure how to do that in CSS. I'm sure it's astonishingly easy, probably one of the first things you learn, but what, I mean, I've learned nothing, so... Oops, wrong button. And uh, I'm in I3 today, and I've forgotten all my uh, key bindings, so you're going to have to deal with that for a little while. Um, so if I do this, yeah. All right, we'll get rid of that. And the first thing we're going to do is open up a terminal, and we'll zoom in so we can actually see. I always forget to zoom in so people can actually see the stuff. So um, I remember it this time. So my start page is hosted on github uh, and it's a github page and, it, and then I just have a um, a plugin that is called uh, we're gonna go, we'll go and see what the extensions manage extensions is called New tab override. I will uh, try to put this in the description if I remember. Uh, it just works. You just open up this thing and it, the settings or whatever. Um, you you put in the link to whatever page you want to open on a new new tab, and it's easy. It's a uh, so it's just that's all that is. Um, as for how to set up a GitHub page, I'm gonna leave you to Google how to do that if you don't know how. Um, that's all I did. It was really simple. GitHub has a very good tutorial on how to do it. Um, and you can see this is the, just the URL of my start at mtwb47, which is my, is my GitHub username, .github.io. 
That's literally all it is. And you, if you want to, with a GitHub page, you can actually forward this to an actual domain that you own if you ha have a domain of your own, uh, which is cool. Anyways, the first thing we need to do is CD into my, uh, where that's located on my computer, which is in documents, pages, MTW, MTWB, docs. And as you can see, this is that's literally all there is to it. And we're going to remove all that stuff. So remove dash R assets and 128.png index.html. And we're empty. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is create an index.html. Make, uh, let's see, so touch index.html. And that is... And then we want a vim index.html. Okay, so uh, basically this is gonna this is gonna be a, a painful thing on how to uh, how Matt learns how to do CSS. So on my other monitor, I'm gonna get some tutorials up, and we're just gonna work through this for the next but maybe half an hour or so, um, and see how it goes. So I'll just talk to, talk through myself and. Um, so first you have to have a uh, I do know these things so we got to copy and paste okay and that gives us our doc page so we, and then we got to close that tag which is uh, yep this one here Oh, we gotta actually start that tag. So, HTML. Slash HTML. Yep. Sometimes I don't know that autocomplete. So that's that. And then we need to uh, do a head. Head. Oh, that's nice. Cool. And we need to do a, um, and then it's just a matter of, so we find uh, my uh, thing here. We do H1. Oops. H1. Okay, and social. Okay, and oops, and we'll uh, yank this and paste it a couple times. Okay, and tab over. Okay, change word fanfic and media and tools. Okay, and just we'll just save that. That was fairly easy. And we're gonna cd into that same one here and git add dash all git oops apparently git add dash dash all git commit. Uh, just page, what does it matter? And git push command origin master, and we'll enter my okay, and that's uploaded to GitHub. Now it usually takes anywhere between three to five minutes or so for that to show up, so we'll look at that here in a minute so while we're doing that i will uh open up a css thing and see how to include a css sheet css um i'm much more familiar with html than i am with css uh so you'll notice that my css is going to be very very weak and coming straight from the w3 schools tutorials um yeah. So, the 
let's see here. External sheets are defined with the link element inside the head section of the HTML page. So it's after head. Yeah. Okay, so I don't actually have. So what we need to do is do this body. I always do that. Okay. Oops. I do know how to use them. <laughs> I really do. I, I say this all the time, but I always mess up. Syntax is horrible, it does, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so what we need to do is, uh, let's see here. Link. Oh, oops, within this, rel equals style sheet. Okay. href equals, um, just style.css, I think. Okay, and then close that out. Okay, and that means in here we need to do to, to touch style.css. I guess bigger so that you can actually see. Uh, we'll clear that. And uh, so we, now we should have a style.css in there. So we should vim style.css. Okay. So, um, do, do, do. So we have these things here. Now let's go see if, um, if the new tab here is, is ready and we'll see what it looks like. Hi, <laughs> look at that. There they are. Um, now we need the next task we have to do is set, um, the, uh, let's set the background next. That should be fairly easy. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, so what we want to do is do um, in this here insert body curly brackets background color and now let's see here. I need um, so I'm so right now I'm using. One dark is my i3 thing, and, and all my window managers are going to be going over to one dark. Um, so uh, that's what we're going to be doing, and I just need to go through it. Let's see, one dark, uh, one dark um, color scheme. I can't type worth a damn today. It's it's been, it's been a horrible day for typing all around. All right, so the background we want to have is pound two eight two C three four. Okay, and we'll write that. And we'll write that, and then we will uh, open up another one here. Oops, I forget that I'm not in it. I'm not in a dynamic tiling window manager anymore. <laughs> This is not good. I just, I miss I'm missing DWM. I used to be such a big i3 fanboy, and now every time I come back to i3, it's just so tedious. Okay, now that's where it needs to be. Okay, so CD documents pages all that. Uh, get add all. We don't really need to do all, but it's just easier. Get commit bg get uh, push and origin mastered Okay, um, 
if you hear shouting in the background, that's just my family yelling at Wheel of Fortune, solving the puzzles. Um, <laughs> you, you can't help them. You can't have them either. They're mine. Um, <laughs> anyways, let's uh, give that a chance to um, to up, you know, propagate, and we'll do something else. Now we need to learn how to make the. Now we need to learn how to, to figure out how to make these go in line. Um, so I think the way to do it is to create a div. Um, um, and I think that's called a, uh, all right, so a CS, so an ID selector is with a pound sign. Um, let's go back to back odds and make sure I didn't. Nope, didn't have to do that. Okay. Um, so if I give a, an ID selector, does this show me the. Uh, yeah. So I could give these an ID. And I think that would work. And. Um, We want to do is an inline block. So, compared to display inline, the major difference is that display inline block allows you to set a width and height of the element. Okay, so also with display inline block, the top of the page margins. I suppose I should um. I can move this over here so you can actually see what I'm reading. So um, this is what, this is what I need here. Compared to display block, the major difference is that display inline block does not add a line break after the element, so the element can sit next to other elements. The following example shows the difference in behavior of display inline, display inline block, and display block. Okay, so let's look and see what this is. Okay, so display inline looks like this. Inline block looks like this. Display block looks like this. Okay, so. Inline or inline block would both work for me. I think I'm going to use inline block because it gives me more. Because uh, I need that space underneath. Oh, well, you want to? Know? I don't know because I think inline is actually going to be work better. So the question is then. Uh, let's see. I really wish I had numbers here. <laughs> I don't know why I have text up here. I don't know what. How am I supposed to know what number that is? Um, of course, when I used i3 all the time, I just knew. Um, anyways, so can I do that display in line with a an ID, or does it need to be um, a div? Is the question I I have. The, so cl the class selector selects HTML elements with a specific class attributes. I wish it would tell you what's the difference. You can also specify that only specific HTML elements should be affected by a class. Oh, okay. So if I do, it still doesn't tell you what's the difference. What's the difference between an ID and a class? I think I'm going to use class. So if I do this, insert, oops, class equals. Uh, header dash block. Uh, I don't know if that will work. Center large. We'll just call it header, class header. That would probably work. Class header. And then we'll do that to all of these. Class equals header class equal header and class equals header if this works is that's gonna be crazy because I don't expect it to work because after all my videos the last few times everything I try has failed so in here I need to um, Enter insert mode and do uh, so the class 
a tribute is done by a period. So a period header, um, and then uh, scrolly, scrolly brackets. And we do display and inline. Just we'll try inline first. Okay, and we'll just write that and open up another one and CD. I should just let this open, I guess. Get add all get commit block get push okay so we can go now and see if um, the background took background did not take of course the background didn't take because why would my life be easy why didn't that work it doesn't make any sense that it didn't work or has it just not propagated yet <sighs> I'm beginning to realize that I don't know anything and that I should just stop trying because obviously nothing's working why isn't it working it should work body that's the way it has it on the i3 school thing is for the backgrounds it does not have uh Oh, you want to? I'm I'm a freaking dumbass. Of course, it's not going to work because this isn't reading as a style sheet. All right, moron. Okay. Oh, what's the difference between that? Um, I appreciate that um, Vim added that semicolon because I forgot that. Um, but my guess here is that it has to, because this is even reading as a style sheet in Vim. So my guess is that it has to have a uh, okay. Well, but it won't show me that. Oh man, I don't know. I'm obviously being stupid. So I'm using an external style sheet. What does the external style sheet look like? This is so. Let's get this back over here so you can actually see. This is dumb. This is this is what it's saying my st the style sheet should look like, and that's what my style sheet looks like. It doesn't have any uh, CD downloads. I'm going to go look at somebody else's. Um, Okay, so, yeah. I'm looking at somebody else's on, another, on my other screen, and it looks exactly like mine. So why isn't... Background. Mm hmm. I wonder if I just use background. Let's see if this... Still not showing up, and that and that the in by block thing didn't show up either. Um, that's awesome. Okay, um, let's close this here and move this back over here. And I could probably use my mouse to get to the thing because I still don't know what workspace that is. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Um. We'll do, we can do this, HTML body, okay, I mean that's fine, 
but I don't know why it wouldn't, why, my guess here is that it's not reading the style ship because, because this, uh, this link here is not appropriate, the right way to do it. Um, so maybe doc slash style.css. And we could just do the whole HTTP colon backslash. Uh, I have to look at the mtwb47.github.io. That's not actually the, the URL though. The URL would be github.com um, slash docs slash mtwb47 slash by hell I don't know GitHub. we'll go find out show more uh, I have to actually get into my Okay, so it's github.com slash mtwb47 slash mt mtwb47 dot github io slash docs. I think. That's probably still not going to work. That's probably dumb. But we're going to try it. Oh, yeah, nothing else to lose. Okay, but right. That. Is that bigger say? This install of Neoven does some weird things with this, the formatting, but you know, whatever. Git add all. Git commit line. Git push. There's no way that works. I'm just telling you this right now. There's no way that that works. Because <sighs> it's not. All right, let's inspect the element. Let's uh, inspect the page here. It's not even reading. It's not even reading the CSS at the top. So let me make this bigger here. See if you can see this, it, it's not even reading that there's a CSS style sheet called in head. Wait, wait, do I even have a header? A, a head tag? I do. But I have everything here. Oh, this is dumb. I'm so dumb. Okay. I bet you that works better. I bet you. Oops, wrong one. All right. If that mistake didn't fix things, I don't know. Oh. It's going to take a while for that to propagate. That's gonna, that's the hardest part about doing this on video. It's going to take a little while for this to propagate. Uh... I might be able to open it up locally and see if that'll work. Um, dot slash index dot html. That's because it's not a script, dumbass. That's dumb. Let's uh, open it up in a file manager, like an actual file manager. Uh, no, you lose. P. 
pages. I'm on my other screen in, in Thunar, if you wonder what I'm doing. Seriously, Vivaldi, you, you're terrible. Why the hell? Okay, so even locally, it's not... So, let's... Uh... Let's move Vivaldi over here, and so you can see this is this is it local. Local, it's not even showing the UD page source. So it shows that the um, it's calling the style sheet here. I wonder if I change that style sheet back. If I change the back just to style sheet because it's in the same directory. Dear Neovim, please, for the love of God, stop adding these extra spaces. You're driving my OCD insane. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, open that up again. Ha 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 ha. This is good. All right. Um, you, you can't see it yet. Um, huzzah. Uh-huh. Look, inline worked, background worked. And all it took was, you know, changing that head tag so it actually closed out, you know, like a normal person. And I'm still not sure why Vivaldi is the one that's opening, but who cares? Close all these, and just close that, and go back to four. I figure out this was four. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting back into I3, I remember. Anyway, so, um, as you saw there, I wasn't up for very long. But there's not a lot of space between these things, so let's, um, what on earth? I'm, I so miss, I'm missing DWM right now. Let's close this and, ah, all right, good. All right. So what we want to do is put, um, some. Uh, I'm hating i3 because I, I'm missing all my key bindings. Anyways, uh, what we need to do here is add some padding between these. So, um, let's uh, padding. Let's let's look at padding on W3 schools. Float in line. What else? Padding. Padding. See, it says right here. So this padding has, okay, so CSS padding. The CSS padding properties are used to generate space around an element's content inside of any defined borders. Within CSS, you have full control over the padding. There are properties for setting the padding for each side of an element, top, right, bottom, and left. So what we need to do is do padding, colon, and we want to do, um, just do padding right colon and five, 10 pixels, semicolon, okay, seven. All right, I'm gonna go open it up again here locally because that seems to be working. Look at there, it works. Okay, now we need to figure out how to get, get it down here and uh, uh, okay, so let's see how first let's find out how long I've been recording. I've been recording for 34 minutes. This is ridiculous. These videos are astonishingly long. Uh, <laughs> but we've made progress. This is real progress. Um, I also have to remember that I actually did re hit record, which is a good thing. Uh, I've done that many times before. Um, as you know, if you've watched these videos before, so I think this is where I'm going to stop for today. This is, this video is completely too long, uh, and I'm going to split these into two videos, one for today, one for tomorrow, um, and that and tomorrow we'll continue on with these things. So you'll get another half an hour video of me actually going through and centering this, adding some links, um, 
changing the font. Those are the things that we still need to do left. Anyways, um, we'll go ahead and uh, switch to the scene here. If you really like this video, thumbs up. Uh, as you can tell, I'm a complete HTML and CSS noob, noob uh, but I think I did it okay. Uh, I, I, I knew some things, but I just knew the, knew the basics, and I've forgotten most of it. So um, that is it for today. If you liked it, thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon in case you want more Linux open source coding kind of things from a complete noob who doesn't do tutorials. You do, I just sit here and do these videos, and if you learn something by accident, even if it's what learn what not to do, fantastic. We'll see you uh, tomorrow with the part two of this video. Thanks for watching.